Hi, my name is John Okoro. Welcome to this week's Auspicious Blockchain video blog. We'll be looking at the tokenization of everything this week. And so let's start by looking at what is tokenization in the first place. So basically, we take a physical thing in the physical world. Let's take, for example, a gold bar here. And we take that gold bar and we put it onto the blockchain. We start by breaking it up into pieces and we digitize. We're making a digital uh, pieces. So you can see here we put it through our little matrix and make it into a digital uh, gold bar. And then we take that digital gold bar on the blockchain now. And we break it up into pieces or tokens that can be easily bought and sold uh, by different people. So they all will actually own a physical or a token representation of that physical gold bar, which is stored somewhere that we trust. So this is the idea of tokenization or digitalization on the blockchain. For do this, we need something called an ERC-721 Ethereum token, which is a non-fungible token. Now stick with me on this. Uh, the idea here is that the Ethereum token is basically helping us to have a unique thing, right? So that gold bar might have a unique stamp number. It's a unique gold bar. We might have a unique teddy bear that maybe is very special to our child or something like that. We might have a unique samurai sword that's a collector's item or a unique collector's goblet. There's only one like it. So these ERC721 tokens, Ethereum tokens, actually represent that unique thing and are unique. So each token is unique. They're not repeatable uh, like other tokens are. Now, what kind of things and physical things could we actually break into digital tokens on the blockchain? Well, one is paintings and artwork. So a couple of examples here. One is something Mycenaeus. They auctioned a Warhol painting for to 100 collectors, 31.5% stake, 1.7 million US dollars, and they did this using tokens. Another one's called snark.art. They tokenized a painting called 89 Seconds of Alcazar into what they call atoms. $100 each atom, and it may gave you a still ownership stake. You could pay in Ethereum or US dollars. So you broke up the art. You could view your piece and have a special viewing uh, by getting together with other people who bought the other parts of that artwork. So it's tokenizing the artwork. For many of us who can't usually afford to buy artwork, this is a cool option. Now, real estate and land is another area that is going in and becoming much more uh, a lot of momentum gaining here. So Fieldcoin is tokenizing real estate and land. This is one example. Some more are B token, which is like an Airbnb on blockchain where you can get an ownership and hold a part of a property. Quantum, which is a REIT, Quantum RE, and NYC real estate coin, which means you can actually get a piece of a Big Apple Manhattan property on the blockchain in a token form. You can buy it, you can sell it just like you would if you had the physical property because it's a representation of physical property. Also, Atlant, iHouse, and Indiegogo, which is an asset-backed security token. And the asset, one of the examples was a St. Regis Ski Resort, which they tokenized and sold uh, using these tokens on the blockchain. Now, what other things can we do? So gold and diamonds and commodities. So there's our gold bar again. We can take that gold bar. And one good example is Digix. They have DAO, DGX, they call it, are their tokens. And they allow you to own tokenized gold. And so they store it in their secure storage location in Singapore. You can go see it if you wanted to. And it's based on the Ethereum blockchain. So you own those tokens. You actually own a piece of the gold. And it could be a unique bar of gold, as we talked about, non-fungible. And also diamonds is another one that they're tracking now using uh, and having ownership on the blockchain and tokenizing it, also to prevent you from getting things like conflict diamonds um, and to be able to track the sourcing of the diamonds as well. Now, let's talk about stable coins. This is another one that's interesting. So what a stable coin is, is basically when we tokenize a currency like a US dollar, a fiat currency, some other fiat currency, and we allow the cryptocurrency to tokenize that and Tether coin, USDT, these are some examples. And the idea is to keep a stable value by making sure that tokenized coin is actually the same value as that fiat currency. So it basically stays at a dollar if you wanted to keep that value. You could tie it to gold or other valuable commodities as well. The goal is to tokenize the underlying stable asset and to have that stable value when you need it so you don't go up and down like maybe Bitcoin might go up and down. Now security tokens is yet another area. Security tokens is where we start touching on the stock market. So security tokens are basically stock market 2.0. 
They allow 24-7 always-on market back by blockchain, and they're much higher liquidity because you can sell quickly at any time. You don't have to wait for the markets to open or close, just like the, the uh, cryptocurrency markets. They are actually open 24-7. Now, a lot of people are actually raising money for their ventures using STOs, which is security token offerings, and they are becoming very popular. Security token is basically a tokenized as a company's stock, so you can buy and sell it on the blockchain or on exchange, unlike ICOs. SCOs are fully regulated. A big issue with ICOs is that the ICOs were not regulated, and a lot of people were concerned because people were losing their money on them, but SCOs are regulated, at least in some jurisdictions. So what's coming up next, the tokenization of everything? Well, one of the things that's coming up next is tokenizing your attention. Yes, you heard me right. So your attention. If people are doing likes and shares on the internet, on social media, there's a possibility that you might get paid for that in tokens. So people like companies like Facebook are now releasing the crypto tokens. You have Facebook's global coin. There's also basic attention token, which goes along with the Brave browser and Vericoin and others. And these are basically paying you for your attention or tokenizing your attention. So you get a little something for that next like and that next share. And please do like, share, and subscribe, of course, our video here as well. So thank you very much to uh, Vect Easy and uh, for some of the images that were used in today's video blog. Also, thanks to Clip Art Hut uh, for some of the other graphics that were used in this video blog as well. And of course, if you enjoy the auspicious blockchain and auspicious agile video blogs, do subscribe, like, and share. And you can support them on Patreon, Amazon, and using cryptocurrency donations, which you can find details on in the comments. So until next time, stay agile, and thanks so much for listening.